Today I've got the three brand new T1.5 Cine lenses from Viltrox for APS-C Sony E-mount cameras that come in at just $415 each. Today we're going to take a first look at these all-metal compact Cine lenses, so let's get into it. All right, so Viltrox has told me that these were designed specifically as cine lenses, not just rehoused photo lenses. Uh, so we'll we'll test them for not this video, but the full in-depth review to see how they perform in things like focus breathing, for example, which if they are true cine lenses, they should do pretty well for that. But uh, let's just throw up some of the basic specs on screen so we don't waste a whole bunch of time uh, with me reading off specs list to you. But these are for APS-C. Uh, they do have filter threads in the front, pretty small filter threads, so you're definitely going to have those filters available if screw-on filters. You could also, of course, use matte boxes with this. There's tons of compact matte boxes that have come out recently from small rig and so on. They're all exactly the same size with the gears in exactly the same spots, and they're all T1.5 lenses, and so far from what I can see, the exposures across these three lenses are pretty identical if you don't account for things like vignetting on the wider angle lens. They're also pretty close in weight with just about 40 grams between the lightest and the heaviest lens, so they're going to be great for quickly swapping out even on gimbal use, for example. Uh, very, very uh, nicely designed lenses, uh, but let's take a closer look. All right, so this is of course the 56 millimeter T1.5, but they're all identical in terms of physical design and I have it mounted here on the Sony A1, which of course is a full frame camera, but it does have that APS-C crop mode. And these lenses do not cover a full frame sensor. It's not even close, it's not usable. It's not just a heavy vignette. They're clearly black in the corners, so you do need to use APS-C mode. But it's great that a lot of these Sony full frame cameras actually have APS-C crop mode and you can still record 4K, slow motion, whatever that camera has. So uh, these are going to be useful actually on quite a, lo a lot of cameras, including something like the Sony A1, which can do 4K 120 frames per second, even in APS-C crop mode using these lenses. But anyway, you have the aperture ring back here uh, marked with T-stops and it moves very, very smoothly, really, really nice. And then you have the focus ring, which is marked on the side with uh, meters on the left side and it actually has uh, feet markings which you can view on the other side on the right side of the lens and that moves very smoothly as well. If anything I would say that the focus ring is a little bit light but it is very very smooth it feels really nice and there's no play in there whatsoever. It'll work great with follow focuses. In the front here you can see the glass is slightly different but the front side of the lenses are all the same 62 millimeter filter threads 70 millimeters on the outside um, and these do not come with lens hoods of course you'll use a matte box if you want something like that of course there's a metal mount on the back but there's no weather sealing here as would be expected for this price but overall these are really really solid these come with these metal slip on caps uh, which are pretty shallow and that's my only complaint really is that they don't really stay on there all that well because they are so shallow i would have loved a cap that was a little bit deeper. I think they tried to not cover up the text here, but in terms of functionality, I would have preferred that these were just a little bit deeper so they stayed on a little bit better. So far, that's my only complaint, physically speaking. They do also each come with these carry bags, and actually, I might use these because, like I said, that cap doesn't stay on all that securely, so if you pop these in the bag and pull it tight, it'll hold it in there, and you don't have to worry about that cap coming off. So. I might actually use these, whereas I don't usually use the bags that come with lenses. Now, like I said, I'm not going to go deep into image quality, anything like that here, because I do want to test them out a little bit more thoroughly before that. But I can say that I did test these out with my cat wide open, and they do seem actually pretty solidly sharp, even wide open. Uh, you can see the hairs uh, around the eye and everything. I think very acceptably sharp. Um, I will test this more carefully, but so far I'm impressed. And if you can use these wide open for $415, they're going to be a great option again, even for full frame cameras, because you can just pop it into crop mode and you've got $415 cine lenses that do well wide open. 
that can work on a full frame camera in APS-C crop mode uh, that takes advantage of 4K 120 and all the other great codecs and stuff that are in this camera. So I'm looking forward to testing them a little bit more clearly. Also, as far as I can tell, the T-stop markings are very accurate in terms of how you adjust your exposure. And they also seem pretty consistent across all three lenses. I'll show you here just a series of quick shots just to see the exposure between the three lenses as well as the color. Um, but so far, so good. If you want to see anything tested specifically in that in-depth review, leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to test that out and include it in the review if I wasn't already planning to anyway. And I'll have that video up as soon as I can, but so far I am happy with these. And let me know what you think and what camera you would want to use these on. Otherwise, if this video was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to see more in the future, and as always, thank you for watching.